So yeah, would you like to introduce yourself and tell me a bit about how you introduced to veganism? So um, I'm Eve Gallagher and I'm a co-coordinator for Animal Rebellion Glasgow. And I actually, the first time I heard about veganism was from a very young age. I've always had a next door neighbour who was vegan herself and she has 24 pet sheep that she's rescued. Right. So I've always actually known about veganism, um, I would say my whole life. Um, <clears throat> from then on, I sort of there was seeds planted here and there as I was growing up. Um, I had a girl that was vegetarian in my class at school and when we were both 14 we went a week where we were like right I bet you can't go vegan so I was actually vegan for a week when I was 14 right okay and um, strangely enough I was round at my granny's house um, she is a retired dairy farmer and so I was round there and they had no food I could eat there was I think I was able to eat um, oat cakes right and so my mum was sort of said to me right, this is, um, you know, you can't do this. It's too inconvenient. You know, we can't be preparing one meal for you and different meals for the rest of the family. Right. So you can't carry this on. And so basically that was me, did my week being vegan and then that was it. Um, but then further down the line, so I kind of got over that, went through school, um, went to university and there'd always been these little seeds planted here and there. And so one day I went out on um, Christmas Eve for the first time ever I hadn't been like out drinking on Christmas Eve I woke up on Christmas morning and I was looking at the the Christmas dinner mm -hmm. felt a bit hungover a bit sick and I was like I can't eat anymore you know I had like yeah. a couple of mouthfuls and I was like nah I think that's that's me defeated um and I was just thinking about the birds because all my all my life as soon as I heard about you know caged birds and things I was like mm -hmm. right I'm only gonna buy free range because that's obviously nicer for the animals and then someone said to me, like, oh, well, free range isn't, you know, actually that much nicer. They're still confined in sheds. They're still in small spaces. Free range doesn't actually mean they get to go outside. It just means they're not in a cage, which is obviously isn't much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I decided at that point um, for a new year, my resolution was going to be I'm going to stop eating chickens or birds anyway. Um, so that was the first thing I sort of um, stopped eating in terms of animal products and then very soon after it was sort of milk was the next one I was having hot chocolate around the festive period and I was like mm, like I don't actually like why am I why am I drinking this as like cow's milk what like what am I doing right yeah so the more I was thinking about things the more like these little things I had been told maybe over my life where like the, the seeds that had been planted were sort of developing and I was thinking right I'm not going to eat that I'm not going to drink that and it was more just coming to a realization that like well why am I doing this I don't actually need to be um or you know someone someone that I respect or look up to has told me that this isn't a good thing mm -hmm. so I'm not going to do it um and yeah so it was between sort of January of 2018 what age were you around this time well, I was 20 right so 20 almost 21 um I yeah so I stopped eating chicken and then within four months I was vegan so the last thing for me was um, fish and eggs. Right. Um, I was I ha working in a place where I was around some marine biologists. And um, yeah, so I would have probably been pescatarian quite happily. Yeah. Um, but then someone told me, they were like, oh, this is so bad. You know, like, wh what are you eating fish? Like, that's, that's the one thing I don't eat. Like, they weren't vegan themselves, but they didn't eat fish right, okay. because they were marine biologists, they knew a lot of information. I thought, well, I know nothing about this subject. So obviously these people are very smart. Yeah. They must be onto something. So I just thought, well, I'm I'm not really in a position where I'm ready to do a lot of research, but I do know that these people are intelligent people. They obviously know what they're talking about. So I'm going to you know, take their advice and I'm going to stop eating fish yeah. as well. So what was it they found uh, dangerous about eating fish? Um, so it wasn't so much dangerous, it was just um, like the environmental impact of right. fishing and because they were into the, like they were into conservation, they were sort of researching the species uh -huh. um, around the area, like the marine life and they, yeah, so basically it was just like how unsustainable fish farming was and <clears throat> they knew just, the direct yeah, impact yeah, it was having. Yeah. yeah. So it was more just listening to what they had to say. I was quite speciesist, I would say at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't care as much about fish as I do other animals uh, or did other animals. Now, 
they're all equal. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, at the time, I sort of didn't see fish as that special or that important. Right. Yeah. So it was more, yeah, the side um, of things like, oh, well, they're, they're damaging the impact. They're, um, you know, it's not a good thing to yeah, be eating yeah. them. So yeah, that's it. Right. I'm not going um, to not going to eat them anymore. Right. Um, so you just that that. cut that out mm-hmm. completely. Yeah. Um, and then how did you decide to cut out eggs? Eggs was um, it was kind of just like the last thing. So I decided, well, what's the point anymore? So I gave the eggs away to a friend and um, that was that. I still, at that point in time, I wasn't so sure. I hadn't done any research into veganism at all. I didn't, um, like, I I didn't really think that eating backyard hen eggs was a problem. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I know that, um, like, so naturally um, chickens would ovulate or produce an egg only 12 to 16 times a year. But, you know, obviously we've farmed and bred them mm. so intensively that they're now producing one a day. Um, and, yeah, like just almost looking at them as resources as well. I don't think yeah. anyone would, um, like that has a chicken that they take the eggs from, if that chicken wasn't producing eggs for them, would they still be then looking after that chicken the same? Right. Probably not. Um, like we are using those animals as resources and I, I feel it is unethical. But mm. at, the, at the time I hadn't done any research. I didn't really have a good understanding of the sort of ethics side of things. So it was more just out of staying consistent, I yeah. suppose. Like if I'm not having any of these other animal products, why is why am I making an exception for this one? Yeah. So rather than sort of looking and digging into it, um, it was a bit like honey, things like that. I had no idea, you know, what the process behind was, but now I know you know like they artificially inseminate the queen bee they mm. cut their wings off to stop them getting away from from the hive um it's just yeah like a lot of these industries have like these hidden secrets but because i wasn't prepared to do the research maybe i thought well if i'm not prepared to do the research um you know that's just me being lazy so i should just you know be vegan and then if i then do some research and see well actually i you know i don't mind that happening to that animal or i don't mind this side of this industry yeah. then maybe i'll start eating those products again so it was kind of like a kind of backwards way of doing it um, yeah. almost like just doing it because i kind of knew that that was the right thing to do um and then um yeah just just uh, yeah. listening to people rather than actually doing my own research yeah because a lot of people they they find that information out and then they become mm, vegan yeah, but for you you exactly. became vegan and then yeah find that then information i started out. to do my research slowly quite interesting. Mm. um how did you go from becoming vegan to becoming like an advocate for veganism so um yeah so basically i yeah i was vegan um for about five and a half months um <clears throat> in the uk then i went over to australia and when I got to Australia, I was um, like, I, I wasn't the best vegan, I would say. There was a couple of occasions that I did eat animal products. Um, I hadn't done any research, so I ate some backyard hen eggs. I right. tried a little bit of kangaroo. I tried a little bit of fish over there. Right, okay. And there were like all of these um, instances that I thought, oh, well, it's, it won't be that bad. It's just a little bit where I've not bought that product. You know, I'm not directly contributing that i'm just like trying something um that someone has given me right <clears throat> but um so at this point i was like living in a van traveling around australia and then um when i became settled in melbourne i decided um i wanted or actually part way around i stopped in um ipswich stayed with some family and i thought you know what i want to watch a documentary and see if um you know any of these family members because i'd seen a lot online about forks over knives a lot of Mm -hmm. people finding some good information there that sort of made them more open to trying a plant-based diet for health reasons so i thought right i'm gonna sit down um i gave a list of documentaries so it was like cowspiracy forks over knives and dominion to Mm -hmm. the um like my third cousins that i was staying with and i said right let's sit down and watch um (laughs) watch a documentary and they decided to choose um, Forks Over Knives. So we watched that. That was all fine and well. And I sort of realized, oh my goodness, like I've, what have I been doing to my body? Because I hadn't been eating, you know, enough or very yeah. well. And I sort of lost a lot of weight very quickly between going vegan and then that point in time. 
so that was a, like quite a wake up call for me, like the nutrition side of it. I literally had no idea what I was actually putting into my body. Right. To be honest, before I was vegan, I had no idea what I was putting yeah, into my yeah. body either. So it was like, you know, whether I was vegan or not watching that documentary, I would have had a shock. It would have been a shock to the system. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of getting into activism, um, a couple of months after that, I then watched Dominion. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the biggest wake up call for me. I then realized what was actually happening to the animals. I was very shocked by some of it. A lot of the information, to be fair, I had seen just from some posts online here and there. Um, But yeah, in terms of um, activism, I decided, right, this is so horrible. I was encouraging the people around me to watch um, and sort of be like, right, you need to see this. Um, This is terrible what's happened to these animals. And that was sort of when I became an activist, I, I guess. Um, so I remember I was sitting um, in my room, I was Googling how to become an animal rights activist. <laughs> like it was like the wiki hires page. Right. And it was like, oh, um, you know, just start a conversation with family members, um, get some activism clothing. So that was the next thing. I <laughs> bought an activism t-shirt, like the, the one I'm wearing today. Um, was like my first piece of activism clothing I bought then I was looking into getting stickers and all the rest of it and there was a really good website over in Australia it was like um like a vegan meetup um sort of website and you could choose what state you were in and then it would come up with all the vegan events that were in your area so I noticed that there were some vegan events um there was something called glass walls and they also had the cubes of truth like with mm-hmm. anonymous for the voiceless yeah so, so for those who don't really know that is yeah. would you like to kind of like dive oh, into yeah, that a little of course. bit um so a cube of truth is basically so the cube is like people stand in a cube shape and they're holding yeah. screens up and on the screens it displays slaughterhouse footage or just um footage from farms and what they try and do is source footage from local farms to the area that they're doing the cube of truth in so like in melbourne it would have like some um footage from like bendigo or um like you know right, the yeah, nearby yeah. places um and, and they stand in like public yeah, places yeah. so that as many yeah. people as possible see mm-hmm. yeah. so they'll try and find like maybe a shopping area like yeah. a busy street um within a town it could be you know anywhere that they're doing the cube of truth um, so yeah, they, they basically try and attract public attention. So they wear masks. So the masks basically, they do draw attention in. Mm-hmm. Um, and what they do is they stop people being distracted by the person that's holding the screen space, right. I suppose. Um, and also it's just like something you're sort of like, oh, what's going on there? And you might come over and then you'll look at the screen and you'll be quite shocked probably yeah. if you haven't seen the sort of footage that's being showed before. And then what um, what we do is we try and do some outreach. So you'll have a few people just standing around the cube, watching the screens as well. So when someone comes over and they look like they're sort of taking an interest, or at least if they've stopped in the first place and they're, you know, standing for long yeah. enough to see what's what's happening, or if they're looking shocked or upset, then what we try and do is we'll we'll sort of stand beside them and we'll say, "Do you know what's going on here?" or do you know what what we're doing today um and you just try and start a conversation um some people might have already seen it online you know they might already know what a cube of truth is yeah um some people will have never seen it before you'll get a lot of people coming past just shouting stuff like i love steak you know mm, right um, and yeah. so you're really open um or like you're opening yourself to like critique um as well um you'll get some people that really disagree with you like people with children as well they might be quite like yeah right protect my kids from this yeah but the idea is you know we're showing you what you're actually feeding your child so yeah yeah. they they should have the right to see that as well um but yeah so it was a a cube of truth type thing um it was called glass walls so like you know the idea of slaughterhouse with glass walls or farm with glass walls um so we're holding up screens and we're standing outside of mcdonald's and this was the first time i'd ever done any sort of activism and um i was really nervous like i'd actually tried to go a few times before and then either like last minute being like oh no i can't do it or right. oh, like i'm not sure so it was actually the sort of second last weekend i was in australia i um, um i so yeah the second last weekend i was in australia i decided um i would yeah i would go and give it a go because i was like well do you know what i'll try i'll go and see if they're there i went 
there was no one there so I was like all right well that's it like that was me I tried and then um I went to go meet up with some friends and I was walking back along the street maybe like half an hour later and then I saw some people setting up and I was like oh they actually are here so then I told my friends I was like right that's it I'm not coming um or like I'll see you later on yeah um but this is this is what I want to be up to and um so I went and took part and they like they um welcomed me with open arms um (laughs) it was really nice like I met (laughs) some really lovely people that day and um yeah I had some really powerful conversations and it was um it was actually um at the the glass walls some guys drove um I think four hours they came from a farm four hours away they had a cow liver and they had a pig's heart and they were eating it like just like ripping it apart with their teeth like sort of spitting it out and they had like blood all over their mouths and it was really horrible like I I was crying a little bit not not like too badly but I was just thinking why why would anyone come and do this what was their motive do you think so they they claimed that they were there promoting a grass-fed organic meat diet right. with the shock factor like we were using the shock factor of this farm and slaughterhouse footage to promote a vegan diet right okay and you know obviously that's their claim i feel um, like that would put more people off of eating mm, meat well what i did i actually um so this is the first time i'd ever done activism and what i did i started a conversation with one of them it was quite unbearable because they stank of blood they had like flies around their mouth and I was just like (laughs) but um started a conversation I said oh well fair enough if it's something you believe in you know you've come out here you've you're you're trying to get people on side but you know we've we've come we've got this table we've got flyers we've got content to give out we're having you know positive conversation with people like I genuinely feel like we have opened some people's eyes up today and maybe even converted some people to Mm -hmm. veganism or at least explore the idea of veganism yeah do you feel like you've had that impact on anyone today and they they just looked at me and they were like well um Mm, you know that's a good point oh maybe next time that might be something we can think about and so it's you know it's very obvious that 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 wasn't um why they were there they were obviously they'd come they were standing alongside vegans to try and upset yeah yeah, us um but one of one of the highlights from that day was one of the girls that was doing activism she asked if she could see the the pig's heart so they handed it over and she just threw it into the road (laughs) so that was their prop gone right um but the liver was disgusting it was like huge um like i'll need i'll need to show you a picture later and you can maybe use it in your video (laughs) if you want but um it's um yeah so that was that was quite a big thing to happen on my first ever day of doing animal rights activism um but yeah after that I went home and I ended up um so I had accepted a job offer so I ended up going home um there was no animal rights activism or anything going on at home I was sort of doing a bit of soul searching I was a bit lost Mm, in myself right and um yeah, I just I was unhappy. I felt really helpless um, in terms of what I could be doing for the animals. Right. I was just working constantly. I didn't have the time to go out and actually do anything um, activism wise. So I ended up um, like yeah, I ended up really feeling like the the only thing I could do was to to leave my job and go and find find a way that I could get more involved with um, activism. Um, and yeah, so that's how I ended up down here in Paisley. So I quit my job. I came down without anywhere to live. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, all my stuff in a car and I, yeah, so I, I got here and I, my idea was, right, I'm going to, I deferred my year for university when I went to Australia. Uh So my idea was I'll come down here. I'll have, you know, my student loan. (laughs) Um, I can get through my last year of uni. And I'm just going to dedicate all my my time outside of that to to activism, right. really. Um, and yeah, so that's that's exactly what I did. I came down and I ended up going to the vegan camp out actually. Yeah. And so for I, those that don't know what that oh, is, yeah. would you like to explain that as well? Oh yeah, the vegan camp out. I actually forget that no one really knows what yeah. that is. But um, there was seven thousand five hundred people there yep. this year, so a that was lot, yeah, yeah a lot of um, vegans or you know vegan curious people. Yeah. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. This was the highest attendance ever, right? Yeah. 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 Crazy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we we um went to the camp out, 
and the I almost didn't go actually because I had a flatmate who well she was going to be my flatmate we still didn't have a flat yet um <laughs> but yeah my flatmate we um we were sort of talking about it and I was like oh please come I really want to go I've you know I had seen it online for a while and I'd asked someone actually um that I knew like I wasn't close with them but I kind of knew them that mm. I knew they were vegan right. and I was like oh do you want to go to this yeah, but they were busy at the time so um unfortunately they couldn't come with me so my last resort was like right maybe I can get some non-vegan mm. friends to come with me so um I spoke to my my flatmate and she was sort of like mm, no I don't really want to go it doesn't doesn't sound great all the rest of it and um then I had also a vegetarian friend and he was um he was working and I asked him oh are you off work this weekend are you do you, do you have to be free and he was actually free so that was really um really good so he was like well do you know what I actually don't have an excuse <laughs> and he's the sort of person that you know if he doesn't have an excuse he's like okay fine I'll come so that was quite lucky for me so he came and then my flatmate came as well so the three of us went down to the camp out and it was so much fun um and actually so my flatmate then after going to the camp out she watched um dairy is scary the youtube yeah. video it's like a five minute video by erin janus and it sort of um describes what happens in the dairy industry and um, like really well um and it is scary <laughs> yeah. so my flatmate watched that first and she thought oh yeah right i'm not gonna um have dairy ever again right i won't go full vegan but not gonna have dairy ever again right, okay then we went to a few talks and things um at the camp out so the camp out is more for so it is for people that are curious about veganism it's not just for vegans yeah. so they've got lots of influential speakers they've got sort of doctors they've got vegan activists they've got um just general people maybe into like the welfare of animals things like that um that talk so there's one stage for the talks then they've got music as well they've got mind um mind body and soul workshops like meditation yoga things like that and then they have activism workshops as well so i was quite interested in the activism workshops but right. for for my flatmate she went to some of the activists talks right and yeah she she sat through loads of them while mm -hmm. i was away doing other things like just by herself quite happy yeah um and then you know by the by the end of the camp out she sort of thought right that's it you know i can't i can't go home now and start eating meat yeah. because there's nothing about vegan veganism i disagree with um but for me personally so i feel like the camp out is a great place for people who aren't vegan to become vegan and then for vegans that aren't activists to become active right um, okay so when i went there that was the first time i actually heard about animal rebellion and now I'm very heavily involved with with Animal Rebellion in Glasgow specifically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was sort of sitting in a, it was a non-violent direct action training session. And I was thinking, um, because I, I'm a big fan of that vegan couple. So I went to their talk and they mentioned it. And I was thinking, hmm, do you know what? Well, I like that vegan couple. So I'll go and I'll do the activism session yeah. um, that they've suggested. And I went and then I thought, do you know what, this sounds really good. You know, I could take two weeks off uni because they were they were talking about the rebellion in October. So it was sort of with Extinction Rebellion at the same time as yeah. that. Um, and they were they were hoping to get like lots of people on the street um, protesting. And yeah, I thought, do you know what, this sounds like a really good way to actually reach people. Um, it's not sort of about targeting individuals. It's about creating system change. Yeah. And you know it was just the first thing i'd really heard that i was like yeah that is definitely something i could get on board with um sort of their their values like no blaming and shaming and um, welcoming everyone and every part of everyone so you don't necessarily have to be a vegan to join animal rebellion either and i think that's great finding something that people can sort of get involved with yeah um but they, you know, they don't have to necessarily be vegan. They, they can just share the belief that the system does need to change. Yeah. And it does, you know, to, to target climate change. Like animal yeah, agriculture is a, a leading cause. Um, Before we started recording, you mm -hmm. were saying about when you first became vegan and mm -hmm. the effects it had on your health. Do you want yeah. to try and get into that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Would I be able to take that off the screen first? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <okay>. Sorry. <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, also, for those who don't know much about 
uh, what Extinction Rebellion is and what Animal Rebellion is. If you know what Extinction Rebellion is, Animal Rebellion is sort of like a sister branch to that, mm-hmm. you could say. Um, yeah. And Extinction Rebellion is the movement of getting uh, politicians and governments to listen to mm-hmm. and take action towards climate change. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, one of the things Animal Rebellion sort of felt. So a lot of us, we obviously share the same values as Extinction Rebellion. Yeah. However, they sort of almost completely ignore the fact that animal agriculture has such a huge impact on on the climate. And so it's like I used to actually think it was like the plant based version of Extinction Rebellion. But no, it's actually just Extinction Rebellion, but also with um, a core value that we need to change the food system as well yeah. as a way of um, tackling climate change. And for that to happen, anyone can agree with that. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, you don't have to be vegan necessarily. Yeah. Um, but it just happens a lot of vegans are part yeah, of them, yeah. are part of it. Um, so yeah, going back to like mm-hmm. when you first became vegan and the uh, effects it had in your health. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, basically because I went vegan just off the back of pieces of information I'd yeah. heard here and there, I knew nothing about nutrition. I um, I didn't really know much. Well, I didn't know much about nutrition, like whether I was vegan or not. Yeah. Like I was very unhealthy. And I think at the a lot time. of people are in the same yeah. situation. Yeah. Most people like, are in the same situation. Yeah, people just they'll, they'll just buy food yeah. that they like and they'll eat it and they'll not really yeah. think about what impact it's going to have on their body, like whether it's good or bad. Yeah. Um. So, I was quite unhealthy. I'd put on a lot of weight at uni, and you know I was hearing comments from family members here and there, like oh, you should try and do a bit of exercise, try and, you know, eat this, eat that. And that, um, you know, I've, I'd always had sort of a problem with my my appearance and, um, like, even my weight, I would say. I was always quite self-conscious. Right. And so, anyway, when I first went vegan, my diet was pretty much, like, I would have maybe a bit of toast and an apple for breakfast and, like, couscous and vegetables for lunch and maybe like couscous and vegetables for dinner so it was like nothing nutritious um like i wasn't really getting any iron any b12 any like real source of protein either um i was like quite literally starving myself i was also exercising a lot at that time because i sort of felt like a bit like sloppy and sluggish and um my boyfriend at the time he had gone over to australia and um i was thinking all right he's going to be back at the end of the summer i don't want to be this sloppy <laughs> like mm. awful looking blob <laughs> i'm going to like get into shape as well right, okay. so it was a combination of literally i was starving myself like unintentionally and then over exercising and i lost about 17 kilos in sort of the space of like four to five months right which was like extremely quick and yeah. like pretty dangerous i would yeah, say like yeah. my, my periods literally stopped as well right so i was very very unhealthy um like that was like quite a big thing um and then yeah so when i went over to australia then i went straight from living in a caravan to then living in a van and driving around the whole coast so that was great but i was really sort of eating beans and cans of soup and um sort of lots of vegetables and things again probably just not eating enough maybe right um, when i was like driving around in the van and then there wasn't a real chance to like sort of go out and eat so it was relatively healthy but it wasn't like en- enough. enough quantity mm-hmm. yeah yeah um so again i was still i hadn't like put on any weight or anything um like i was still relatively like thin um but i would say i was eating more um sort of protein rich foods and things like that right um but yeah not not healthy um in the slightest and then when i got to melbourne actually or no it was actually when i when i got to ipswich so i drove like from perth round um, right. sort of clockwise <clears throat> and in Ips- ipswich i had some family members and um, like third cousins and i decided do you know what i want to try and share some aspect of veganism with my family members because they yeah. didn't really know much about it um and i i had like made a sort of little list of documentaries that i quite wanted to watch um i just maybe seen a couple of posts on social media saying oh like this this documentary is like about health this one's about the climate this one's about the animals so the three options i sort of gave them were um forks over knives cowspiracy and dominion so 
those were the three I'd seen that I was sort of like, oh, well, they've impacted someone in some way. So it might be good for me to watch them as well. And then Mm -hmm. I quite like watching things before I recommend them to people. So, um, yeah, so we watched um, Forks Over Knives anyway. And that was a real big wake up call sort of shock to me. I because I'd been hearing all of these things from family members like, oh, you're doing really great. Like you've lost all this weight. Oh, you're looking so good. You know, it was like all these positive things. But really, like in myself, I wasn't. I wasn't happy with how I looked still like even when I was at my thinnest I was just I was still unhappy with how I looked so it's not it didn't change anything um but I was getting all of these positive reassuring comments yeah. um but then I realized oh my goodness I was literally starving myself I've been having like, like you know I've had no nutrients in my diet um but I feel like whether I was vegan or whether I was eating meat watching forks over knives would have been a shock to the system either way yeah yeah because before i was eating like mac and cheese like with bits of bacon in it for like you know three meals a week um yeah. <laughs> before i was vegan yeah, so I was kind yeah. of like well um you know either way it would have been like a shock but i was like right no i probably you know i feel like maybe i've done some damage to my body <laughs> um so i decided i looked more into nutrition like i bought my first thing of nutritional yeast things like that yeah, to get right, my b12 okay. Um, I was eating more um, like lentils, like Mm -hmm. curry, dal things, um, like getting more protein, eating lots of spinach and kale um, to get like iron, calcium, things like that. So I was very, at that point, I became very conscious of my health, um, whereas before I wasn't really concerned. It was just more about like, oh, well, I'm skinnier when I eat this or like, yeah, yeah, things like that. So yeah, my diet became... um, a lot better with education Mm -hmm. which i would advise if anyone is considering going vegan don't do what i did don't just jump in um and stop eating animal products just do some research and make sure you're replacing the nutrients that you would get from those animal products with nutritious vegetables and fruits and legumes and nuts and seeds and like seeds are a great one for like omega like fatty acids and things that you would miss because i was getting like no fat in my diet whatsoever um but now i eat like seeds and nuts and things like that like peanut butter is great and very tasty easy Mm -hmm. way to like um to get that in you um but yeah that was um probably one of the biggest things I had to overcome it was it was sort of like a combination of disordered eating I was I was battling with and then like over exercising and just like general body image yeah but I feel like once I got the nutrition under control and then I've sort of got a healthy exercise routine now um and like I'm very happy with how I look you know I'm, yeah. I'm very comfortable in my own That's skin good to hear. If, yeah, if, yeah yeah like I'm so much happier now but if anyone said anything to me that was like you know maybe like a comment like oh you started putting weight on again or you know things like that and she's like well so what you know i'm healthy yeah as long as i know i'm getting all the nutrients i need to to, like keep my brain functioning and you know my body in check and things like that um then i don't really care what i look like as long as i'm in a fit state to help the animals that's the most important thing for me now and i am um so so that's great and it's also kind of good that you went through what you went through mm. uh, because you can come from like a primary source like to teach people the better options out there yeah. and how to do it properly instead mm. of more people going and trying to do it doing yeah. it wrong or or having really uh, adverse uh, health like yeah. defects from it mm-hmm. and then just completely like abandoning because of that and no, then going exactly. back to like what they had already or what doing what they were doing already yeah but rather just starting from from like scratch Mm. knowing what to do and exactly. how to do it the best exactly. way and what's best now, for the I do yeah I do try to share a lot on my social media now like what nutrition you're getting from what ingredient if I post um like foods mm-hmm. I'll, I'll make sure there's something of everything yeah. in that recipe so it's like a kind of complete uh, like a nutritionally complete meal that that person is going to be getting right, if they're copying right. my recipe and um, so all my meals now um like in my my oats in the morning I'll have like seeds nuts fruit like yeah. lots lots of like nutrition in there yeah um like protein um like b12 from like a fortified milk things like that um so i do i am very very health conscious yeah. now um like you know it might not look it because people sort of um they'll link health with physical appearance so they might think mm. oh well eve was really healthy before when she was skinny but now she's put on weight she can't be healthy 
I like I am the healthiest I've ever been in my life right now and yeah. I'm definitely the happiest as well um so that's like something I'm really happy about that I've like overcome that what like, was such a big problem that did consume me just like body image and I think all young girls especially go through it and boys as well and um, like just young people in general there's always influences from social media um like one of the first things I actually did was just unfollowed all celebrities right um, things like that on on social media anything that was making me feel like oh my god like why don't i look like that um yeah. so i don't actually follow any celebrities on social media still to this day i think that's a good idea for anyone really yeah yeah that's so that's like one thing it's not really vegan related but yeah um yeah just um making sure as long as you're healthy um like i've got my blood um my blood's checked maybe twice since being vegan mm-hmm. and they've both been like both yeah. times everything's been perfect like even better than they were before like very low cholesterol um like just yeah every everything's sort of in check now um and i am looking after myself yeah just bringing up cholesterol there that's mm-hmm. a, a good point because cholesterol is definitely something that affects mm-hmm. a lot of people but it's mm-hmm. not a visual thing you can't yeah. see cholesterol no, you don't exactly. know what that looks like mm-hmm. but that's uh that clearly harms a lot of people mm-hmm. um and i think that disassociation between what someone looks like and how healthy they are exactly is, like it makes no sense to think that mm-hmm. you can see health mm-hmm. necessarily yeah and that's yeah. it's it is something that it's almost like we've just been led to believe like if i'm skinny i'm healthy yeah if I'm, exactly if i've got um, a bit of you know body fat then i must be unhealthy yeah. it's just completely unrelated um but yeah cholesterol is quite interesting so um, a lot of like these foods, um, like so processed meats, they're um, like ranked as a class one carcinogen by the World Health Organization, mm-hmm. like alongside tobacco, alcohol, asbestos, um, things like that. Obviously, we know they're bad for us, but then things like eggs, people might think, well, eggs are healthy, lots of protein. They are very high in cholesterol, though. Yeah. It's like one egg um, has the same amount of cholesterol as five cigarettes. Um, so like things like that, wow. you just don't think about. And you really don't yeah no. so like even so you might have these guys or girls um like anyone that's really into the gym like smashing 10 eggs for breakfast yeah but that is that is keeping their cholesterol very high so if you just swap that for a plant-based protein like maybe like tofu scramble or something instead yeah. you would see you'd still be getting that protein but your cholesterol levels would go down drastically yeah um and the talk of veganism and like going to the gym right now mm. is very prevalent due yeah. to that documentary that just came out yeah and uh that sort of uh that information has like blown up like a lot mm. i know i think Absolutely. four or five people that have went and tried like the like a vegan <clears throat> diet purely based off that documentary yeah. um so what are your opinions on that documentary and the correlation between physical health and veganism well um so physical health wise i think it's great there's a lot of um so yeah in the game changers movie Mm. documentary they um they've got a lot of plant-based athletes um that are all you know they're they're on plant-based diets to improve their performance um like overall and you know in doing that their their performance is improving because of their health improving like um a vegan diet is sort of the healthiest diet a whole food plant-based vegan diet obviously you can eat a vegan diet that's full of rubbish yeah um, of i'm i'm on a whole food plant-based vegan diet myself now um because i want to be you know peak health yeah, for, yeah. for doing as much activism as possible um but yeah the the correlation it does um so it improves your recovery um by by heaps um you know like your your muscles are getting all the sort of protein you're getting a lot of carbohydrates you're getting everything you need from your your vegan diet and you don't have the sort of well yeah you don't have your high cholesterol you don't have all of these other sort of more um like well side effects from eating meat um i'm trying to think what else in the the documentary is quite good um i would say the documentary overall is amazing um so like for the from the greater good perspective um the documentary is having a great impact on raising awareness of you know that a plant-based diet is appropriate for athletes which mm-hmm. most people might feel like oh, i'm not going to get enough of this that or the next thing yeah um but yeah um so it's great in that from that perspective but it does sort of target men which i think is it, it, it's sad that they've kind of had to do that like target men and their health and sort of yeah. their, their manhood if you like things like that 
um, to have an impact. It obviously, um, from an animal rights side of things, anything that's going to help the animals is good. Yeah. But again, you know, if it's if it's going to be um, targeting like people and their you know their body image or like yeah. you know things about themselves, um, I'm not sure that that would that is the best way to go about it. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little bit controversial, yeah. but I do feel like it's overall it is a good documentary, very informative, um, and yeah, the the guy that's created it is is vegan himself mm-hmm. now after after creating the documentary. So it do, it does go to show you know going through the the research process yourself as someone that maybe eats animal products, um, seeing how a plant based diet could improve your health improve your performance you know just trialing out because there are so many people now just trialing the the plant-based yeah. diet off the back of the documentary which is amazing yeah um, and just like it's just been a massive topic of um conversation um like in the, the past couple of months since it's been out which is really nice to see sort of just like mainstream social media um it is out there so that's mm-hmm. good it's it's bas- basically starting conversations about veganism which um i think is is obviously a very positive yeah. thing talking about anything is always the best yeah. way to mm-hmm. understand it mm-hmm. and um it's that even regardless of how controversial it is mm-hmm. uh it's definitely better to talk about it because i'm sure yeah. when veganism started to become more prevalent it was mm-hmm. a very controversial topic not saying it's not a controversial topic now because it <laughs> definitely is yeah but at, at that first like when the, the seed was mm-hmm. first planted people were definitely looking at it differently than how they are now yeah which is interesting um before we started recording you were talking about about uh, your struggle with addiction would you be interested in talking a bit about that yeah so um i have always sort of had a problem with alcohol um, like drinking alcohol like right now I am sober and I have mm. been for I just checked on my phone earlier and it's like 87 days Amazing. so yeah I'm really happy about that yeah, um, incredible. Like that's yeah that's something I've been trying to overcome for a while um, it was more like social pressures that stopped me every time I've tried to stop drinking alcohol mm-hmm. um, but no it was um, the first time I sort of realized that that was an option for me was um, seeing like activists like that vegan couple mm-hmm. And they're sober. And I was—I remember I was listening to a podcast um, when I was in Australia and they were saying, oh, yeah, like people that are drunk are just so obnoxious. And I was like, no, we're not. Like, <laughs> you know, that's not yeah. me. Um, and then now, now I sit here and I've been on a couple of nights out sober and I have seen some some sights. And you I'm have thinking, saw what the obnoxious yeah, looks like. Yeah, so now I'm like, okay, right. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Um, and I'm glad that I'm past that. Um, but yeah, in, in the past though, I, I'd got into a lot of trouble um, as a child, like at the age of 14, I almost got an ASBO for sort of like drinking out in, in public. It was like a Tesco car park. Um, right. You know, um, that wasn't great. And then in school, I <clears throat> had, well, I would have potentially, I would have been the house captain of like a house within the mm-hmm. school. Um, and then drank a lot of alcohol, almost had to, to go to hospital to have my stomach pumped. Right. And then was, you know, demoted from having that position. Um, And then, you know, didn't do too well in my exams either and ended up leaving school a year early. Um, But it was like lots of little things here and there. Like I was kind of struggling with home life a little bit when I left school. Um, I wasn't enjoying sort of being at home so much. So I was just going down to Edinburgh every weekend pretty much, going out, drinking sort of just to pass the time. And yeah, as, as time went on, I was at university I'd be drinking pretty much every night um, or I'd go to uni and like as a treat for just waking up and going to an hour lecture I'd go out for a pint or go to the pub Um, it was just like that was what my life revolved around it was just drinking um, and you know obviously a massive waste of money as well um, drinking alcohol and um, yeah so from there I would say like the if if I hadn't reached that point already where I was sort of like right this needs to stop there was there was one night out in Edinburgh that I woke up somewhere I had no idea where I was right. I'd lost everything I was you know it was scary um, yeah, of course. and then I was 17 at the time as well I went to the train station I had to just like beg I was crying I was just like please can I get a train ticket to get home um and you know that should have been a point in my life where I, I thought to myself right no that's it no more and it was sort of around that point um it was probably a combination of getting in trouble at school 
Um, and then like, you know, those sort of situations where yeah. I was like drinking to the point of blacking out, I started drinking like ciders more often and not really touching the spirits. Um, but then eventually it just built back up and I was like back on like drinking a lot of spirits yeah. and um, like just not remembering anything um, after nights out. And yeah, so there was, there was one particular incident that I was in my car after a night out and I was asleep and the keys luckily were in the back of the car, the engine was off, but I got woken up by the police and I was arrested um, under the suspicion of being drunk and in charge of a vehicle. Yeah. So that's basically when you're like in a car and the keys are in the car. So like you are in charge of the vehicle in the sense yep. like you could turn the car on yeah. and drive. Um, so that was a very like scary situation to be in. Um, it wasn't it wasn't pleasant I was just thinking oh my god I'm gonna be in so much trouble um I was you know obviously very upset I thought right that's my my license lost what am I gonna do um like I just I just didn't know um what what I was gonna do at that point as well I was I was sort of struggling at university I was just my mental health has always been quite a big issue for me and I was feeling quite low at that point uh, in general and I Anyway, so the co the court date was set. I was um, gonna go into court, and very luckily, um, because of all the evidence that was in my favor, like the the keys being in the back of the car, I was asleep when I was, you know, yeah. woken up and arrested. Um, there was enough um, for them to then say, right, this yeah. is obviously you made a mistake. Um, you you weren't driving the vehicle. Yeah. Um, so that's it. We're gonna sort of leave it at that. So. <clears throat> I felt, you know, very relieved. But unfortunately for me, um, I was driving down to uni and I was actually going to drop out of university at that point because I was just really, really struggling, um, like sort of mentally um, with things. And it was like more, like having that court date hanging over me as well. It was just like lots of yeah. little things here and there. I was just like, this is just too much. I need to like go and stay at home for a bit. But on my way down to uni, it was sort of raining... I was um, driving my car, so this was before I had um, been to court and had everything dropped. Mm -hmm. And I actually ended up crashing my car and it got written off. And I thought, well, do you know what? That's that. Um, you know, I was going to lose my license anyway, but then it turned out I didn't lose my license. <laughs> so <laughs> I just had nice. a very bad, like, series of events Jeez, happen. Oh. But that actually made me, because I lost my car, I was like, well, now I'm stuck down in Paisley for a bit. Like, I was going to go and pick up my stuff. So I just stayed at uni, just out of, yeah. you know, um, convenience almost. Yeah. Um, but no, um, <laughs> after after the um, sort of Christmas time, like, my, my parents were very keen on me to try and stick it out. Um, so after Christmas time, I decided, right, I'm going to try to give this a go. I, I was receiving some counselling. I was on antidepressants right. as well. The counselling really helped me. Um, actually, like it was a counsellor set up through the university. So that was like a really nice thing for me to have, um, mm -hmm. you know, just someone to talk to yeah. that was like just there to listen. Um, and then I started doing a bit more, started like hanging out with people, like doing a bit more, you know, stuff with friends. And this was sort of the point after that, like um, my first, um, like my Christmas dinner where I was like, oh my God, like yeah. I'm not going to eat birds anymore. Right. So this was just after that. So this was when I was sort of, I would say I was becoming happier. I was just doing more of what I wanted to do. Um, like my birthday had passed as well. But yeah, on my birthday night, actually, that was another time um, I drank a lot, obviously. And I'd left a cheese toasty in the toasty maker and I woke up and I'd obviously fallen asleep in the shower of all things. And I was like, why am I so uncomfortable? And no. I had like my neck on the tap and I was just like, oh my goodness, why am I so cold? And the water had gone cold. And I was just thinking, what a mess, you know, what what kind of situation is that to end up right. in? Um, yeah, so it was just lots of things like that. I should have really th thought to myself, like, no, yeah. you shouldn't be drinking uh, because it was just constant. Every time yeah. I went out, it was like a blackout. Um, and I'd always had family members and things telling me, like, maybe you should stop drinking. Maybe you should do this um, or cut down all the rest of it. I just thought it was funny. Like, I'd like wet the bed maybe like four or five times um, in my adult life from right drinking yeah. to excess and then you know having losing control complete control um and then it yeah so it got to the point where I had some people that I sort of started bumping into that were sober 
and then I sort of discovered the the straight edge vegan community Mm -hmm. online and then um like one of my mum's friends that I really look up to she's been sober for a number of years and it was sort of I realized you know what that is an option I don't have to because the times I have tried to stop drinking it was my friends and family members were or like my friends were like oh no like that's not fun you know um and it was yeah social pressure definitely I think it's like one of the hardest things to break out when that's such because it was like my life it was every day I would be going out for a drink or having a drink at the house so for people that are currently going through what Mm. you were going through what would you sort of say or or how would you or do you have any words of wisdom kind of thing um I would say words of wisdom wise definitely you do not need alcohol I know everyone's like oh you don't need alcohol to have fun <laughs> yeah. but um but I don't know find find a hobby like I what I did when I first went sober was um I threw myself into activism yeah. and that's been amazing because animal rebellion they've got a zero tolerance policy anyway so obviously if you're like taking part in an action or something that's possibly arrestable as well like with extinction rebellion um like any of these sort of movements if you're you know caught with drugs or alcohol in your system you know that's just you know that's that's not great so um i thought well it's not just bad on you but bad on that reflects badly on them yeah so i was thinking well i want to take this seriously um i you know it's a waste of my time it's a waste of my money and uh, it got to a point I was at the doctors I was really really low like my my mental health was was uh, very bad um and the doctor actually referred me to a sort of group for alcoholics mm. and at that point I sort of said to myself right I don't want to I don't want to go <laughs> like yeah. I, I had actually almost gone to one a uh, few months prior when I was working sort of up up north before I came down to Paisley and um yeah my anxiety was just so bad and I just I just couldn't go and this was I was telling my friends about it I was like this is how I'm feeling I'm feeling this bad about alcohol that I'm actually considering going to one of these meetings um and you know half of them were sort of like yeah no that's you know fair enough and then some were like oh no it's not that bad you know but I think it's just you know I I'm the only one that knew how I was feeling at the time it was really consuming my life so It was almost like having this excuse of, oh, well, I've joined this organization that's zero tolerance as well. That's like something I'm very good. Once I commit to something, I can, you know, commit to it. And then I'm like, well, that's me not doing that again. It's like eating animal products. As soon as I realized how violent the industries were and how how terrible, um, like, the practices, you know, like standard practice things, like just like clipping the teeth of piglets mm. and cutting their tails off or like de-beaking hens mm. um like things like that that you just don't think about that you know people are like oh well the animals had a happy life or like just knowing that the animals dying at or being killed um yeah. at you know less than a year old they're all babies um it's just little things like this um as soon as you're sort of aware of them you're like right no i'm stopping there i'm not going to do that ever again and it's the same with with alcohol i'm and like drugs as well um i'm i'm very confident that i've i've put my foot down now i'm saying right that's it i'm committing to this i'm never going to do it again like when i want something i want it and i can commit to it because the times in the past that i've tried to maybe stop drinking i've i've not been so sure of myself it was like when i initially went vegan and someone had maybe offered me something like a bit of fish or a backyard mm. hen egg yeah. when I wasn't so sure of myself I would maybe be like oh well I'm gonna look weird if I say no or yeah, like it's right. not that bad you know I don't so you just look... sort of conform to mm-hmm. them in the moment exactly yeah. and in the past you know I was like oh, I'm gonna look like such a big or like a strange um weird mm, person if right. I'm saying right I don't drink but now I'm very confident in saying do you know what I don't drink because it was bad for my mental health it was you know I was wasting my time yeah. I've got more time to be you know doing productive things that I actually wanted to do when I was wasting all of that time being hung over or wasting all that money on alcohol um and you know it's that's that is a good enough answer um you know if if you tell people you don't drink and they're sort of like oh well, why you yeah. know it would be like if I was like oh I don't do heroin yeah. um like no one would be no like oh why it, yeah, yeah it's like or alcohol, even cigarettes if you yeah. don't smoke no one yeah no one questions yeah it. But, but alcohol, alcohol is the is only so it's the only drug that people would yep. question why why don't yeah. you take take this yeah. or consume this drug which i think that really needs to change um so yeah if you if anyone is going through that 
just know that it's very normal not to want to put something into your body yeah. that's you know it's like you know cancer causing um, and yeah. it's it, it's like a, a poison to literally your literally a toxin yeah, yeah it so. will it will like it will stop your kidneys working it will um damage your liver it yeah. will brain cells like depleting yeah. it's yeah it's really bad for you and mm. you lose control over um you know your body you lose control of your mind you lose time you lose money it's just yeah. it's it's not something you have to do and just know that you don't have to do it yeah <laughs> yeah um so first of all thank you very much for coming on is That's there right. anything you'd like to say while you have the platform um i would probably say if you are if you are curious about veganism um like please just do do research into what sort of nutrition you need before you start um obviously it's great if you've seen something and you're like right that's it i need to go vegan but please um it does take a bit of time but once it's the same with any other lifestyle change it's like when everyone started recycling you know at first you're sort of like oh this is so much effort but now you just like out of habit you'll just put the the cardboard in the cardboard Mm, box you put the cans in the the can bin and it's just like learning a new behavior and it doesn't take long yeah um just adapt to that lifestyle exactly and there's so many health benefits um, to veganism it massively reduces your impact on on the planet like you can it there are estimations now that you could reduce your carbon footprint by 85 percent like up to 85 percent by um adopting a plant-based diet wow um, which is you know insane yeah it's um like one <laughs> one shower is um oh no one one pound of of beef is like the equivalent to like 200 showers right, yeah, everyone's okay. telling you have shorter showers hmm. just you know look or, into uh, yeah. it you could cut out meat yeah. and you would have a, a far yeah. greater impact so definitely um look into other avenues if maybe the, the animal rights stuff isn't something that concerns you too much do look into other avenues um a lot of the times i relate things to my dogs I think just imagine how scared those dogs would be if they were, you know, in a situation that farmed mm. animals are in. Um, just if there's anything that you can do to make that connection, yeah. try. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, um, definitely, I'm I'm so happy. Um, as as a vegan, as an activist, um, it has changed my life. Yeah. Like I would, I would probably still be drinking, eating mac and cheese every night of the week. I would be very unhealthy. I would be very. You know, I, I did feel like I had no purpose in life before. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you if you are vegan curious, please, please look further into it. And I'm sure if there's anything that's holding you back, you will find an argument that against it. And you'll be like, right, well, I've got nothing left now. Um, like just I'm going to go for it. Um, and also, if you're an activist, if anyone is um, accusing you of forcing um, like that, you're forcing your lifestyle on them. A piece of advice I would give you is um like you're you're encouraging people to be vegan in the Mm. same way you would encourage them to recycle in the same way you would encourage them to walk instead of drive in the same way that you would encourage them to buy second hand like it is not you're not forcing your lifestyle on anyone so keep keep encouraging people to be vegan and you know stand your ground be sure of yourself because that's something i wish i had done sooner as well but no thank you thank you for having me no thank you very much for coming on i'll link all your socials below and stuff so anyone can check it out and uh yeah thank you yeah (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.